And edification is just building the house according to the plans God left us. And we please Him as we do so. So, edification. If we look it up in the Greek dictionary, the word is oikodume. And it's used 18 times in the New Testament. And here's, if you just popped up your dictionary, it says this. Building, building up, or metaphorically. Now we get into the New Testament epistle use of the word. It's always in the Greek language. Oikos is, is the word for house, and oikodume is the building of the house. And so those, those words are, are very Greek-minded, but when you use it for people, you get into a metaphoric usage. And this is what the dictionary says. Metaphorically, this word is used for someone who promotes another's growth, another's happiness, another's holiness, another's building up. So the idea of a spiritual work in their life. Let's start in Matthew 24, and I want to show you each of the uses of this word, and you can see how uh, this building idea is there. So this word, oikodume, a feminine noun, 18 times. Here's the first time it's used in the New Testament, Matthew 24, 1. It says, and, and, and this is a very, very great passage. This is Jesus talking about what's next. This is Jesus giving, if you remember three years ago we looked at this, he gives us a view of what the earth looks like as he's descending at the second coming. It's just the most incredible passage, and and as we saw then, it really gives us an idea about the growing closeness that that all of the, the ways that the earth looks when Christ comes. Our world is coming in that direction. But before he gave that great Olivet Discourse, look at verse 1 of Matthew 24. Then Jesus went out, and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up, so he went out the temple, most likely down to Kidron Valley. He's coming back up the Mount of Olives, looking back from the east at Jerusalem. So they're coming up to him on the side of the Mount of Olives to show him the, and here's the word, edification. Do you know we get the word edifice from edification? It's the same idea. The edifice, the building, edification is building up. And so right there, they came to show him, and and New King James puts, the buildings of the temple, the oikodume, the edification, the edifying of the temples, the the built up buildings of the temple. Now, keep going to the parallel passage, Mark 13. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, all have the same uh, prophetic view of the future that Jesus gave. But Mark 13... In verse 1, and as he went out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what, and there is the same word, what edifications, edifices, buildings are here. These built up things, these beautiful monuments, and see what buildings are here, what edifyings are here. Same word. Well, the next time this word shows up, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 14. You can actually mark all these. It's a wonderful thing to chase words through the New Testament and to see them. But now we get into the metaphoric use. Same word. Every time we're looking at these, these are the same words. But by the context we know, now we've gone from looking at marble and limestone and gold of the temple to Romans 14. And look at verse 19. Therefore, let us pursue... That's in the midst of talking about questionable things, the gray areas. Paul said, all things are lawful unto me, except what God has already clearly said is sin. He didn't say all, that that a Christian can do anything and there's no restraints. He is already saying that the Bible has clearly defined what is sin. He's only talking about the areas the Bible hasn't defined. And among things the Bible has not categorically said are sin are wrong, are offensive to God. He says everything is lawful to us. So all the different observances and and customs of people that they develop and their traditions, he said, all those things are lawful. But after going through that, look at verse 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may... And there it is again. The word for building up something. This is one of Paul's favorite words when he talks about what we're to be doing. He said, always make sure your life is focusing not on tearing down, but on building up. 
that which one may edify, build up, oikodume, that we may raise spiritually and promote their growth. Do those things. Don't do the questionable things. Keep going to chapter 15 of Romans. In verse 2, it says this in Romans 15, 2, Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. We are to those who surround us, Seek out the things. Remember Paul said, as much as lies within me, I want to live at peace with everyone. He says, I want to seek out what is peace-inducing, what is pleasing, so that I can spiritually build them up. It's hard to build up someone that, that you've got agitated. It's very hard to, with the rod of correction in your hand, seek to edify a child. That is more of a amending process, getting them back on the road. The building up comes later. You can't do both at the same time. Keep going to the next book, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, or 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I mean, and uh, just three chapters, four chapters over, it says this, Paul's speaking in the context again of the fire that's coming, that's going to test our works, and he's talking about workmanship and building and all that, and he says this, for we are God's fellow workers. Remember, we, we were created for the purpose of good works, that's what God designed us to be. That's, we're the ones who work together with God, his fellow workers. You are God's field. Remember the metaphors I said of the church. We're an agricultural field. But look at this. You are God's building. Now there's where it's amazing. We've gone from buildings of the temple, a physical use, to metaphoric building up of people. Now he says you are the built up ones of God. That means that this edification process isn't something God takes lightly. God's goal is every individual believer be a built-up one. He doesn't want anybody left behind. Remember that initiative in our government, no child left behind? God wants no believer left out of being built up. And the difference between God and the government is the government loses track of a lot of stuff. God loses track of no one. He is tracking every one of us believers, and he knows every time you get close enough to someone in a situation where you can reach out to them and minister the word of God to them and build them up, and he sees all the ones we do and we don't. Do you know what the judgment seat of Christ in 1 Corinthians 3 is all about? There's going to be a lot of our life that is burned up in the fires of judgment because it was good for nothing. It was a time when we could have ministered the word of God. We could have encouraged someone. We could have testified of God's grace. We could have declared and pointed at Christ. And we don't. We have other things on our mind. We're distracted. Perhaps we're defeated. Whatever it is. And all that time is going to burn up. It won't be rewarded. Because we're God's fellow workers. We're the field that he has sown. uh, The the giftedness and the, the, the... charisma toy, the the grace gifts that he wants to be evident in our life. And we all are those who are God's buildings he has made. Well, go to chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. Go on to the right, 1 Corinthians 14. Next time the word shows up, actually uh, shows up four times in this chapter. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3. But he who prophesies, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later, about the gift of prophecy, speaks edification. So there is a great tie between the spoken word, the word of God, and this building up. It isn't just pats. It isn't just, uh, you know, the, the idea of uh, how to win friends and influence people. It's not just the, the positive thinking kind of stuff that they use in sales deals where people get all hummed and think they can do anything and, and go forward. It's not that. Notice what it says. It's tied to speaking the word of God. The, the prophecy idea here is speaking out, and not just speaking out, but speaking out content that comes from God. So, he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort. So it breaks out. There is edification, building up. There is also, within that, exhortation and comfort. And, and so the, the concept here, it could be that edification is made up of exhortation and comfort, or it could be that there's edification and exhortation and comfort. But all of them together God is using, but you see the edification, the building up is associated closely. Look at verse 5. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, 
unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. See, remember the problem of the Corinthians? They were really into edification. They were into self-edification. That was the big problem. They were more concerned that they get edified than that the church get edified. And Paul speaks to that and he says that your motivation's wrong, you're very self-centered. And so these people were really buzzing on the, the tongue speaking and they were minimizing the interpretation of it so that God's message would touch the whole body. Notice again that those at the end of verse 5, the church that receives edification are the ones that hear the word of God. For the, the message that came through tongues from God, rightly interpreted, would be them receiving the word of God. So it's a wonderful tie again. Edification is through the word of God. Look at verse 12. Even so you, 1 Corinthians 14, 12, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. If you're praying and saying, God, gift me, use me, it's not for the me part. It's the use part. It's so that my gifts can be used for your glory in building up someone else. And so he says, it's okay to ask. It's okay to say, Lord, I want to be used. And I want to be, for the edification of the church, excelling. I want to be excellent and overflowing in that. Now look down at verse 26, the fourth time in this chapter. This is the most edifying chapter in the Bible, okay? 1 Corinthians 14 has four occurrences of this word. Verse 26, how is it then, brethren... Whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done, and here's the last time in this chapter, for edification. And a little bit later he talks about the decent and an order and, and that concept that, that all of this spirit-prompted work will be a very orderly, a systematic, tied to the Word of God process. But you notice again what he says... Let all things be done. This is the most absolute statement of God's desire about edification. He says, everything that we allow in our lives, that we do personally, that we promote within the church, that we promote within the context of whatever we're responsible for in, in our personal spiritual lives, everything, everything, the last part of verse 26, should be done for edification. That's a great way to live. Is, is what I own edifying or not edifying? Is where I go edifying or not edifying? And it's not primarily to me. It's to others. If people know where I go, what I do, what I have, will it cause them to be built up and become more Christ-like or not? So see, this, this is something that, that should greatly alter the way we live. Because this is an absolute statement. Not only whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all the glory of God. You know, sometimes he's a little distant. For everybody in Christ that lives around us and intersects with our lives, everything in our life should promote their growth spiritually and not demote or stunt them. Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians. We're in... At the end of 1 Corinthians, look at 2 Corinthians 5. The next occurrence is verse 1 of 2 Corinthians 5. And this is what it says. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have... There's that word again. We have an edification from God. Uh, Bonnie was observing something recently. She was uh, gathered with a, a bunch of dear saints. And she said one of the saints was mentioning their sickness. And she said they did everything they could do to not mention that they would probably die from it. And she said, it is so foreign for us to talk about death. It's almost like we don't want to do that. And yet, look, look how God looks on our death. We know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have something to build us up from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We have this, this building God made. And this is something that is looked on positively. And that's why Paul says he longs to be clothed upon with his heavenly body. We need to recalibrate how we look at this. This world is not my home. We are all just passing through. Don't be shocked if you have heart problems, respiratory problems, you know, whatever system problems it is. Don't be surprised if you have the mutiny of your cells that we call cancer, that they begin growing without following the way that the genetic code that God designed design them to grow and they grow off in these tumors. Don't be surprised by that. That's going to happen to all of us because flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. 
You can't take your body, I can't take this body to heaven. It cannot go. It has to either be laid aside in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, or it has to go uh, through death. But one of those two has to happen. And we shouldn't act like, you know, we don't want to talk about that. It is coming quickly. The time is flying for all of us. Uh, just have Paul's concept here that our heavenly body is a building from God. It's a part of his process of building us up. We can't be fully built up till we get rid of this body of flesh that we have. Look at 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 8. That's the next time this word occurs. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 8. And he said, For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed. Paul looked at his entire apostolic ministry and he, he took all that. I mean, he had the power to, to do so much. I mean, raise the dead and, and just send away the demon legions. Everything he could do and write the word of God. And you know what he said? All that, what? It's for your edification. It wasn't for me. He said, I'm not anything big. What's big is building up believers. Second Corinthians 12, verse 19. Keep going. Two more chapters over to the right. Again, do you think we excuse ourselves to you? We speak before God in Christ. But we do all things, beloved, for your edification. Paul's heartbeat was that people be built up. Edification. Chapter 13, 2 Corinthians 13, 10. Next chapter over. Therefore I write these things, being absent. Lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. He's talking about their misconduct. And he says, I have authority. But he says, my goal is that you all don't let these things sideline you from the main thing you're to be doing, which is edification. Two more, real quickly. Go over to Ephesians. 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 21. Next time this word shows up, it's talking about the church. And it says this in verse 21, in whom the whole building... There it is, edification, the same word. The whole building, that's the body that of the house of God, the, the body of Christ, all of us individual believers, the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. We see emerging here. The house that we are is to be built up into a more and more holy temple. That means more and more the individual believers living holy lives so that when we gather for worship, we have worship that is so much on earth as it is in heaven. It's a wonderful concept. The last one is the verse that we've uh, all been reading, Ephesians 4.12. And let me read that to you. It says this, verse 12, For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body... Of Christ, And then in verse 16, it says this of Ephesians 4, which every joint supplies according to the effective working of every part, it does its share to cause growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And here we see that edification is to be tempered by love. This building up uh, has to have love. And then finally in verse 29, the last time that this term occurs in the New Testament, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Remember, so much of edification is involved speaking, sharing the word of God with people. He says, make sure that, that you're careful. Don't let any corrupt, any cutting or, or offensive word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification? Because edification, look at this, imparts grace to the hearers.